call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody to the Redevelopment Commission meeting September 6, 2022. Uh, the first item of business is roll call. Jeff Hutton here. Randy Cassidy here. Cindy Carney here. Here. Uh, staff present. John Zodi with the hand department. Christina Finley, hand department. Larry Allen, legal. Um, Brent Pierce, hand department. Oh, yeah, Sarah Bauer, Lydia Anderson, um, Commissioner, Eric. Any other staff present? All right, next item of business is examination of claims for August 19, 2022 for $81,888.35. Um, are there any questions or comments from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Jeff Hutton, I'm move to approve the claims for August 19th, 2022, as written. Randy Cassidy, second. Have a first and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Moving on, examination of payroll registers, August 12th, 2022, for $34,420.85, and August 26th, 2022, uh, for $34,420.91. Are there any comments or questions from commissioners? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Randy Cassidy, I'll move, move, make a motion for approval. And Sarah Beverly Danson, I'll second. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, no one opposed? All right, next item of business, report of officers and committees. Is there a director's report? There is, Madam President. Um, good evening, commissioners. Um, couple of things for you. On September 30th, the city is going to have a Boards and Commissions Appreciation event at Cascades uh, Park or Cascades Golf Course Clubhouse and wanted to let you all know about that. At our next meeting, uh, which will be September 19th, I believe, we'd like to get a photo of the commission and we'll be talking about some of the commission's accomplishments uh, as we will for our other Boards and Commissions. So if you all um, keep that in mind and uh, we'll uh, get those uh, in front of everyone for you to take a look at the accomplishments and we'll get a photo at our next meeting because uh, we want to make sure we have uh, all the materials ready uh, for that uh, uh, September 30th Thank you. and what time uh, I don't know but I'll let you know <laughs> I think it's uh, I think six o'clock is what uh, comes to mind but I'll I'll let you know we'll send something out to all of you to confirm um, the hand staff met and we're going over rehab program guidelines like we told you we were going to do uh, this fall. Hopefully we get those wrapped up this month. We have agreed on some of the, you know, uh, the periodic time in which we would review them. Uh, we need to look at some of the caps that we're raising, uh, but we have started work on those and hope to have those done uh, in September for some October consideration by the commission. And then the uh, last thing is, uh, last week was budget week, as you know, for the city. So PAN had its budget hearing and presented our, our budget. Um, I'm going to send you the final copy of my budget presentation if you didn't see that. Um, it got finalized shortly before. And so now that that's done, uh, budget's under consideration, obviously. And we'll get questions back to the city council. Uh, they've asked a number of those. And we'll get those responses back to them. So we'll uh, move forward that way. So that concludes my report. All right. Thank you. Any questions from commissioners? All right, is there a legal report? Uh, just two quick items. Uh, one, I will note just a, a slight correction to resolution 2259 that'll be on the agenda tonight. There was a problem with the signature block that uh, Commissioner Hutton uh, recognized, and we, so we fixed that. It just listed Deborah Meyerson as vice president instead of secretary, although she's not here this evening, so we'll have somebody else sign in addition to the president, and that'll just be mentioned as member. We'll just cross that out. So that was one update. And then the second one is, um, after the reports, uh, Madam President, we forgot to read the minutes and approve the minutes from last meeting. So if we could go back and do that as part of new uh, business, that would be fantastic. All right. Um, is there a treasurer's report? Mr. Underwood is out of the office. I know. I don't know if there's anyone else from the controller's office on. I'm happy to take any questions and uh, the things that I'm vastly ignorant about, take them to Mr. Underwood and get back to you in writing. All right, thank you. Any business development updates? Hi, everyone. Alex, Director of Economic Sustainable Development. Uh, just a quick update that um, 
I may have mentioned that, that we had renewed activity around the kiln building in the trades district. And um, the kiln collective, who is the group of local business owners who's interested in uh, closing on the building and starting work on it, is moving forward. There is on Thursday a review by the Historic Preservation Commission of a um, proposal for them to advance the project. If you recall, it was a multi-story project. Uh, they are advancing uh, first with a single single story uh, renovation followed with, with the ability to actually expand onto multiple stories. But, uh, but that twist to go first floor only for the time being until they can go to the next level is what uh, the historic preservation will review. Uh, with that approval, um, planning staff will be able to make a staff level approval and then we should be then moving towards close on that, uh, on that building. That'll be a, a great update for that area, I think. Um, do you, any commissioners have any, have any questions for Mr. Crowley? Alex, down at the Switchyard Park, the parcel that we sold the old night move building, do we have any additional movement on that from a time frame? Yeah, uh, I can speak to that. Alex, did you hear the question? I did, if you want to handle it. Uh... Yeah, sure. Um, so I spoke to the developer last week, and that's Real America. Um, they had to go in and do some geopeering, uh, work with geopeers. If you don't know, I became familiar with that term. So if you don't know, it's basically ground stabilization to work on that. So they need to do some of that, and they're going to be kicking things off more visibly uh, later this month. So I have driven by and there's a construction trailer out there and became curious myself so uh, I checked in with them and that's what's going on okay. all right thank you yep um, before we move on to new business I'd like to go back and uh, um, ask for the reading of the minutes for August 15 2022 do any commissioners have any questions or comments and if not I'll entertain a motion Make a motion to approve the minutes of August 15, 2022. And Sarah Beverly Dansman, I second. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No one opposed. Minutes passed. Thanks, Larry. Mm -hmm. Uh, next item of business under new business is resolution 22-59 to approve closing conveyance of 1306 West, West Kirkwood Avenue. Who would like to speak to us regarding this? And Mr. Pierce is on to speak to that. Oh, goodness. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, thanks for your time this evening. So 1306 West Kirkwood, uh, is property that uh, the city uh, has owned uh, and it was recently sort of uh, given back to the city based off of a um, a, a default on the city's mortgage and so it, it went up for bid on August 1st and ended on August 31st and we received one bid uh, that was actually over the initial bidding asking price and that was Matt Murphy he owned several properties directly adjacent to uh, 1306 West Kirkwood uh, the bidding amount initially was for 28,000 his bid was thirty thousand one hundred dollars, and so I, uh, Larry, can uh, jump in here. But I believe we're asking for your permission to accept the bid and close on the property. Yeah, I'll just note that you all had a, had approved this process. We're just kind of doing a belt and suspenders approach with this resolution, just making it clear this was the best offer. This is the offer that came in. Here's the price. Just allowing you to see it one more time before approving closing. So this is just the, the final final step, just to be as cautious as we possibly can be with uh, approving this. Am I allowed to ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, Please. With the city real estate, is the city allowed to add uh, to um, accept a bid that's higher than? The, uh, I mean, it's delightful, but um, the city's allowed to accept a bid that's higher than the asking price. Yeah, the city's allowed to hire, accept a bid that's higher, but no lower than the average of the two appraisals. Oh, okay. So. Thank you. And, and how, is the, um, how is this publicized? I, I don't think, I think that the initial vote on this happened before I joined the commission, and so yeah. um, I'm, this is, 
my first time seeing something specifically like this and um, it's great that the bid was above asking but it's quite below kind of what it's what the value is listed on Zillow so I was just kind of curious how how that works and is it normal to only receive one bid uh, so the, the pro yeah. I'm sorry Larry no, um, care if I jump in please do <laughs> um, so the property itself uh, it, the, the bidding process had to be no by state law had to be noticed twice before uh, and that was in the Herald Times before um, the bidding process started and the, the public notice included uh, property obviously address parcel number legal description uh, the the initial starting or bid, bidding price and then the dates during which the, the bidding will be opened and closed and so we, we gave that 30 days and and I, I don't have I guess experience previously with putting city uh, property out for bid so I don't know if if one is is unusual but I will say for this property it, it has a, a structure on it um, a single family residence that that is in extreme disrepair and so the uh, the bidder like I said Mr. Murphy he owns properties the three I think that are around 1306 West Kirkwood and in talking with him he does plan to to sort of enter the structure and see if there's any chance to salvage but um, I, and I, I see where you're in fact we looked up the county assessment and it, it may be um, it, it greatly devalues the property because of the condition of the structure and so the the cost to demo the structure is going to be expensive and, and I believe that he he does want to build something new there in the event he can't salvage the building and I know that there was some squatting issues there uh, I believe the, the county and or the city sort of deemed the the home um, a biohazard uh, so it's it's um, it, it complicates the value I think because of the condition of the structure that's very helpful thank you mm -hmm. Brian question in regards to the structure as a, as a whole what we're looking at is dilapidated structure at the present moment based on my understanding the redevelopment commission owns it at the present moment which means we have the care custody and control of this pro property which you just mentioned is a biohazard and has squatting issues accordingly mm -hmm. now from a responsibility standpoint as we've looked at our other structures and things we've owned trying to clean things up the sale as it moves forward mr murphy's probably the correct gentleman he bid on it he went through the proper process he happens to be an adjoining property owner as we look at this how can we make sure that we're not just leaving something that is a hazard and is also a condemned structure to make sure that this gets cleaned up accordingly and doesn't just come back because mm -hmm. based on my understanding the city and the redevelopment at this present loaned money on the property it didn't work out it's an unfortunate situation for the individuals and it clears mm -hmm. up the estate but we do have the issue of now we've got another piece of property that we're just moving it into the hands of someone else mm -hmm. and not making sure we have it taken care of don't want to kick the can down the road want to help in whatever way is necessary to make this a clean proper site that something could be done on because as we look at the west kirkwood and the west third street this is a prominent corner mm -hmm. from a standpoint that everybody will notice that so while i see no issues with that based on a value because of the degradation how do we help or assure that we're going to get some redevelopment out of this because that is on a, it, my understanding is it's a separate mm -hmm. parcel in itself so is there additional planning issues that's going to have to help so we can make sure we get a redevelopment instead of just kicking a can down the road on a dilapidated piece of property that could potentially mm -hmm. just set there and no it's a great question and a few things to that i uh matt mr matt it's matt murphy mr murphy said that he'd be happy to make himself available to any commissioner for a for a phone call or an email exchange whatever it may be to discuss his uh, potential plans i've been involved with redevelopments in the past from city-owned property to privately owned property that in 
that along with that transaction included some kind of timeline or you know redevelopment plan that is agreeable to the commission and the property owner i don't know if we have done that in bloomington but um, that's all that's a possibility as well i, I would say that uh, and then i guess the third thing would be that we are um you know well within our rights as the hand department to um issue citations for any any uh, issues with the whether it's an unsafe issue with the property you know whether that's uh you know, weeds and grass uh, so we, we do have the ability to to regulate it to, to a certain extent once it's you know um sits with the private property owner but if any of those things make sense i'm happy to to facilitate any of that and and uh what, what i'll what i'll do if it's okay is email the commission with uh matt murphy's email address and phone number because he told me to do that do that if there were questions and so maybe it's just a, a kind of a good idea to reach out and see what his thoughts are on on um, a, pl a plan for it yeah. Can I, just a quick clarification. So typically when we bring these things to you, it is RDC owned property. In this case, actually, this is owned through the hand department um, directly. So this isn't an RDC owned. This is, you're acting in your capacity. This is why it's under a different statute as you read, read through the, the resolution here. You're acting in your capacity as oversight over the hand department as opposed to directly owning this property and being involved in this one because this involved the, the foreclosure process with a, with a hand owned mortgage is, is my understanding of it. And Mr. Zodi and, and Mr. Pierce can can verify that uh, to the extent possible. But just to that slight clarification in terms of this process is a little bit different than what we've done in the past and what we're used to. Yeah. So we're, we're this is essentially the uh, you're acting as an oversight board. It also made sense for the publication notice to be able to have everything to be publicly available to go through a public meeting. Yeah. So that was the last you know uh, meeting uh, two months ago or whatever it was. Right. Which yeah. is fine. My question yeah. in regard to it's, it's all, everything's still valid. I just want to make that clarification. Yeah, in that's particular, fine. Now, just clear, clear, clear clarification mm -hmm. on the deed. It says it's redevelopment. As far as the transaction on the GIS, so there may be some uh, that may be a mistake. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just letting you know that that may be an error that occurred. Yeah. And what my question regards to it, as far as the property and such is the fact that you know at the present moment we have care custody control and my question my question in yeah. regards to what we're going to do is not the carrot and sticks can we help to help do this is the basis of what i'm trying to come up with the sale is the first thing the next thing is we've got a dilapidated piece of property that for whatever short term based upon foreclosure we've received back how do we make it better and help out the future property so it's the carrot and stick. Yes, we can cite them, but as opposed to doing that, what can we do to help and incentivize? Mm -hmm. So first things to get back. I, I, don't, I don't want to get out in front of anything here, but you know, we, we whether it's owner occupied repair or or um, unsafe funds uh, to that point about being to helping facilitate redevelopment, we, we may have some resources internally uh, to help with that. And, and so I, and I know there's some income qualifications and some other things that would uh, need to be evaluated before that would happen. But given the condition that it's in, uh, you know, my presumption is that uh, the whoever the eventual owner is will, will need to demolish. But, you know, in the event that uh, he or she wants to uh, rehab and, you know, do we could, you know, look into whatever we could ha whatever we could do to help out. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah I'm not even looking for dollars. I'm just looking to help move that yeah. process for Matt Murphy as a long-term community individual, and he's the adjoining property owner. So I take mm -hmm. I take solace in the fact that we're looking at moving it through the low to the highest bidder, who also happens to have skin in the game in the neighborhood. Yeah. So with that, uh, the only thing I would ask is that we, as we move forward, that you know, Matt. You know, just does something quickly instead of letting saying set their investor. So I'll make a motion. Well, I, think we'll we'll have a question. Okay. I guess I, you know, when I bought my house, there was nothing telling me, it was, it was a fixer upper, but there was nothing telling me, and I would have resented anything telling me that I had 12 months to fix it up or else, or I had to fix it up to some degree of someone else's degree of, of 
value, whether it was aesthetic or safety or whatever, that when I bought the house, I bought the house and bought the property. And when we're selling the house and selling this property, we're selling it to a private owner. And if he leaves it for five years because he's accumulating the money so that he can really do it the right way or the way he wants to or something, I question our authority to tell him or restrict him or guide him yeah, directly. Right. He's a private owner buying a piece of property. And, and the only reason we would do that or the only avenue where we would do that is if, if as Brent mentioned, under uh, Title VI of the Municipal Code, if there were issues on the property, so trash and, you know, the grass and is too high. And the yeah. lot is, you know, the lot is sort of wooded and it's it's a small lot, but that there is some authority there. Also under the unsafe building law, which is basically the state law and local ordinance as well, if we determine that the structure is unsafe mm -hmm. in some way, um, moving forward. Oh, then, I agree then, with that. And yeah. it, it's up to his behavior, yeah. uh, visible or non-visible, his actions or non-actions as he moves forward. But as for us telling him now what we expect of him, I'm not sure we have the desire or authority to do that. Or not directly, I think. You know, no, I'm not. I, I, as the, there was no intention in any capacity to regulate what the, that's the how private, I heard what you're saying. I understand, and I'm okay. on my third marriage, so my communication skills are limited. <laughs> okay, I'm well aware of that. Yeah. So what I'm trying to to reiterate from a public standpoint is we've we've went through, we've had a foreclosure, we've taken care of that to help somebody and move on. We've listed it in a legal legal way to get it back into another private hands. The two things I've heard is biohazard and squatting and being remotely familiar with mm -hmm. what is occurring in our community at the present time, those two things concern me mm -hmm. based upon what we've seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to say, what is the plan? Happy to do it. We have care custody and control. If we have a biohazard and a squatting or issue that is providing unsafe conditions, and we as the redevelopment commission, our part is to redevelop. So I just want to make sure the safety, care, custody, and control is moving forward. I have no doubt Mr. Murphy will do a fine job, mm -hmm. and I have no questions in regards to private ownership. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has the right to do what they want on a personal level. Mm -hmm. We're a commission. I'm just looking to say, if there are those issues, how are they going to be resolved so they don't just continue to occur? And okay. then we say, well, it's not our problem. We can cite you, okay, instead of citing you. Can we help you mm -hmm. so it gets better? Because again, mm -hmm. if you know where this is at, I mean, I don't know who put the wildflowers in the corner. Great job, okay? But this is a corner as we look at it as a community. You will stop there mm -hmm. if you're going west on Kirkwood at some point, mm -hmm. or you're going to Kleindorf, which is hardware. Mm -hmm. You know, then it's there. So what can we do to help? Mm -hmm. Not not hurt, not hinder, not create any okay. private property Thank issues. You. I appreciate that clarification. I, I'd also like to add on. Um, so I think that these raise really interesting questions, and uh, not necessarily for this particular property, given kind of how far along in the process we are, but especially since um, we, we were talking earlier about how the hand um, staff is kind of redoing guidelines on a variety of issues. I'm wondering how often, I mean, it doesn't sound like this seems like it's a very kind of um, rare occurrence to have something like this happen, but I wonder if we need to think about um, when it's appropriate for a city-owned or RDC-owned property or through hand um, to be sold when it's in a state such, I don't know if this biohazard designation is a legal um, designation or not, but to kind of Another way to deal with this issue is, is instead of selling it to, instead of selling these sorts of properties to a private citizen at a discount with the understanding that we hope that they are going to remediate the property, another way that the city could handle this is by actually demolishing a structure that is problematic and then 
selling the, the land afterwards and it could be sold at a higher rate because it wouldn't cost, you wouldn't need the private owner to take on the costs associated with demolition. And then you don't have the issue of wondering how long it's going to take for the um, private citizen to actually get around to remediating the property. So I'm just kind of curious how that has been discussed, if at all, within hand and, you know, again, I'm not saying let's pull back this particular property because it's too far along, I think, in the process at this point, but for other properties going forward, maybe we should be thinking about a different approach. Yeah, I would say um, that a lot of that would be housed under the unsafe building laws, and so no matter who owns the property, you know, if the city were to own an unsafe structure, then we would um, probably, I would, I'd, struggle during my time. I don't think where there's a structure that we own that there would be an unsafe order on. Usually it's it's the city taking action on a privately held property because typically we maintain our properties in a way that, you know, if there isn't a if there isn't anything in motion, we're maintaining the property in another way to save it for uh, a uh, redevelopment or something like that. The hospital is a good example. The Hopewell site, we'll get to that I think at the, in, in two resolutions, but um, so but if, if something is declared unsafe, then we there, there is a time on it. So there are different types of orders you can you can issue. So in order to uh, repair, in order to remove, uh, which is a, demo a order to demolish. Um, and so depending on the structure, we would issue that order, and those those all have times uh, as associated with them. They also have a process that goes to the Board of Public Works. So. I think we, um, it really is dependent on the property. And okay, so this it. biohazard designation is not a real designation. It, there's no like legal status on this property that says it is legally considered. Not that I'm aware of, Brent, do you? There, there was an order, I believe, from the county that um, prohibits anybody from going into the structure. Now, I, whether that's a biohazard characterization or if it's just that it's uh, unsafe for any sort of person to be in there to um, to breathe the air. You know, I don't know what the order uh, technically was, but they're definitely it's boarded up, and there's something in place that doesn't allow folks to go inside. Yeah, there was a, it was boarded up because of the we had had people have been going in. So as we do with yeah. structures, we boarded that up to keep people from going in, regardless. And then, as Brent indicated, there might be a, an issue there with uh, the environmental. Yeah. So, so and I would say that it definitely is a unique situation. I, 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 we're sort of a last resort owner of this property, kind of a temporary steward of it, uh, and so it's we we don't go out of our way to to pick to, to pluck these properties out of the community and do something with them, right? We only have it because there was a defaulted mortgage on it, so. Um, but I, I don't disagree that in the future, it doesn't mean we shouldn't have maybe a plan for uh, future situations that might be similar where we could help with demo or or something. But again, I, I know that Mr. Murphy, in the event that uh, he becomes owner, is going to look at the possibility of uh, repurposing it and salvaging it for, for housing. So, and I should say, I, I didn't finish my statement about the what we do in an unsafe Sorry. situation no, no that's okay i just i think i'd love to hang in there if if the order isn't met so if the owner doesn't repair if they don't demolish then we as the city can go in and do it through the abatement process and that goes to the board of public works and we we have a, what's called an unsafe building fund that would fund that type of work so um, anytime we're, we actually have a number of properties that have unsafe orders on them and uh, there are two right now that we are we're repairing the foundations because the owners have been unresponsive and so the city is paying for those to be done through the unsafe building fund and so there that's that's our sort of mechanism to keep things safe if you will the some structures on south walnut right across from um chocolate moose in the 700 block are under unsafe order so that's our sort of <laughs> that's sort of our mechanism to uh, to, to, to uh, keep things moving and keep structures safe because sometimes you have a an unresponsive owner or people that don't have the money and needs to be done so thank you yeah thanks for the questions but but there's nothing that that would uh, I guess prohibit 
a future owner to come back to hand to ask for any type of assistance that would be available to anyone, correct? Uh, if for our programs, um, it is there, there would be income restrictions there, so sure. we, would, we would not be able to uh, help someone who's doing something with a market rate house, for instance, unless it had something to do with you know a Title Six or Sixteen issue that you know worked through our normal processes. But that's correct. I think. Yeah, it would just be available. They would have to meet the requirements mm -hmm. as anybody else, etc. But that would be more of a the owner would ask for it versus it would be offered. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. All right, any other questions on resolution 22-59 from commissioners? Any public comment? All right, not hearing any. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 22-59 with the change that Larry indicated in regards to the signature block. And I will second as Sarah Bowerly danced it. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And no one opposed. Resolution passes. Next item of business is resolution 22-60, approval of project review and approval form for resurfacing Winslow Road. Who would like to speak to us regarding this? I can speak very briefly. So this is, uh, for those of you new to the commission, there are a couple of you, I don't know if we've gone through this process from the beginning in terms of approving a project review and approval form. We usually have a two-step process for these types of projects. The first step is kind of viewing what we believe is going to be the budget for uh, an eligible project for you all to review. These are not uh, resolutions approving funding. They are just resolutions pr approving in concept the project to move forward and then at, at a later date a contract would be brought to you with the details of the project. In this case uh, our, our Board of Public Works, not Board of Public Works, our Public Works Department is working on a project to renew and refresh and resurface uh, Winslow Road from South Walnut Street to High Street and this would this is goes kind of along with the multimodal improvements that they've made along that way as well they built kind of a bike path along that street and they've also put in some islands over the over time so now they're going to go back through and, and grind down the road and, and resurface it to make it a little bit safer and to kind of prove that improve that infrastructure that's tied to the southern part of the consolidated tiff and so um, as you'll see just to scroll down they estimate Currently, that those those preliminary costs would be five hundred thousand dollars from the TIF. Uh, that there there would be other matching funds that would be a part of that, which details to come as we go through the I believe the in dot letting process for this. But happy to try to answer any questions you have, or certainly obtain more information. So, sorry, ladies first. Um, just five hundred thousand for that distance and hilliness seem in the ballpark from any historical yeah I, I don't believe that that will cover the full cost uh, mm -hmm. remotely so the cost would be typically much higher for that kind of work this would be part of okay. just a, a portion of that funding but in terms of our local match that probably matches typically for a bigger project we, we've had local matches of upwards of two to four million dollars in that range for some of the in-depth projects but I'm happy to get more details on this particular one this came from sort of getting sense yes yeah, yeah. Um, so this would continue to have the speed bumps then along that road. I don't. I don't think there are. Any. I don't think there are speed bumps. There are. There are traffic mitigation. Yeah, items. they're like these little like. Yeah. They're they're kind of like speed bumps. They're not. Bumps. They're not speed bumps. You're not supposed to drive the, over them to be very clear oh, well, because well, no, pedestrians no, no, can. The, no, like by by those by this area. I thought that there were a little bit of humps. Bumps, I don't. Like, yeah, maybe there are, and I just don't remember. There is a raised, it might be a little bit of a raised, and maybe this is what we're trying to also <laughs> fix here, because there are crosswalks that they've added. They've yes. added several crosswalks as part of that improvement process. But I'll, I'll check to see if they're going to maintain the, the if there was our humps and speed humps intended to be speed humps. I believe that those were unintentional speed humps, but that's my own personal belief and not necessarily <laughs> belief in the city of Bloomington. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I drive that road every day. I don't remember yeah, speed bumps, but oh, like, it could be like. But it's a little like, raised. You, you are to, right. You definitely is, have to slow down. Yeah. It is a little raised, and you definitely have to slow down. And we did get a few reports of people uh, driving over those early on when they were 
it's not used to those. But yeah. please avoid them. Yeah. And pedestrians, if you can. Yeah. As you look at this, are they, they're just looking at, at a resurfacing, not recurving or changing of anything? I don't believe they're, they're looking at recurving or, or changing anything. I think that they did some of the recurving on the north side whenever they did the multimodal improvements yeah. because of widening that sidewalk right. and kind of changing that profile. Yeah. Well, the only reason I ask this, uh, uh, from a consolidated TIF standpoint, this is essentially our seed money we're looking at guaranteeing in order to get the project started. That's my belief, yeah. That's okay, so that way we move forward on that. So the engineering aspect will be determined in a different capacity at a later date through Public Works. That's correct. Okay, because just as, a, as the old guy here, you know, that one little intersection that's at an angle right there, I, I know of two people two people that's ended up in the hospital yeah. based right. upon that yeah. little short road that goes nowhere. So, but from a seed standpoint, if this gets us the start of the public works project, our time frame, they're literally talking about trying to do something within the next in the next year. Yeah, so the preliminary engineering is going to be the, obviously the first step and I think that's going into spring, early spring of next year and then possibly have that done in 2023 I could confirm with yeah. public works to make sure that's all accurate but of the primary thing Adam or public works is asking for is the seed money to get started that's right, that's right. okay and we nothing it'll come back to us again but we'll have already approved the money so well it's, this is a you know the next thing that you would see is a contract where you would have to approve specific funding this is right. just a concept right. so if they don't go forward with this project if there's a hiccup or if there's something else uh, you're not on the hook for any money. You have we, We're not able to expend any money on the RDC's behalf just by passage of this particular project review <coughs> form. That needs to come later. So this is just more the concept of the project, the fact that it's going to be happening and to kind of give you a sense of what to look out for in the what future. To put in. Yeah. Uh, also a review, it gives a, internally it also gives the controller's office a chance to have an initial review of projects, kind of go through them, kind of work out the timeline, what the funding mix is going to be, and, and work with the department on that, just just in terms of how these, this particular resolution. Okay, and, and just the question as far as consolidated TIF, how does this relay into, go, into what we've already got out there hanging out from a dollar standpoint long term? That's a great question, I, and, and I mean, that, that would be part of the annual report. I'd be happy to, let me pass that along to Jeff okay. and see if he can get you some information yeah, about how just, that would stack up. Like anything, you know, yeah. the protection of the big pot of money, how much have we already allocated and how much is left to go? And I'll, I'll, just to be 100% frank with you, is I trust implicitly Jeff Underwood's expertise in this, so when he He's tells good. me that this is good and this is a good budget level, that's what I wait for before I do my part on these kind of things. I'll do a legal review, wait for the controller's approval, and then go for it. So this okay. has received controller's approval, but I'll try to get some. Per well, conceive if you receive controller's approval, we trust Jeff. Yep. Any other questions from commissioners? Just to confirm, this is a, we're not approving any expenditure of money. This is just a concept approval, correct? That's correct. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Any public comment? All right, not hearing any, uh, I'll entertain a motion on resolution 22-60. Um, I move to um, approve resolution 22-60. And my name is Sarah Bowerly Dansman. Randy didn't say his name when he his for approval. <laughs> Randy Cassidy, I'll make a motion to second. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No one opposed. Resolution is approved. Next item of business is resolution 22-61, approval of funding for repairs of RDC properties. Who'd like to speak to us regarding this? Do you want me to start or do you want to start? Sure, go ahead. So a little while ago we had approved, you all had approved a contract with Ampris to do some repairs to RDC properties. It focused largely on the mill, doing some repainting and repair work there. We also included a little bit of a, a, an amount for RDC properties, particularly because we anticipated owning new properties at Hopewell, kind of to our earlier discussion about our responsibilities in owning our, our properties. Uh, this is approval to add a little bit of money to that. What we have seen with the Hopewell properties is that there has been a need, or there is a current need to repair some windows that have been broken, some doors that have been, people have tried to pry open to kind of secure those properties. We have, as you all know, we we're, uh, obtained the services of a security company to do reports. John's receiving those reports and we're just getting 
uh, some little things about new doors that have been open in various buildings. So what we want to do with this is just to make sure that we have enough through the end of the year that as those things come up, we can immediately call someone out and have them secure those buildings and, and, and seal off those potential openings that would create you know, a hazard inside the building where people could potentially harm themselves or do damage to the property or anything like that. So. Yeah, I wouldn't have anything to add. I, I do get the reports as they come in, so um, definitely yeah. see evidence of some intervention with some buildings uh, going on. So I think it's an important priority for us to make sure we keep those buildings secure. And just, yeah, just one other thing, just forgot to mention, is that J.D. Boroff, who is our facilities director, administers all this, so we kind of, uh, John's been really great as he gets these reports at all hours of the night, frankly, to forward them on to J.D. Uh, he also sometimes copies me uh, so that I can provide no help whatsoever, but J.D. Uh, really has been interacting with Aunt Chris and trying to get these properties secured, so they've been doing a, uh, a good job of just trying to stay on top of them. And, that. We also don't, this is just to be clear, this is approval for a f additional 15000 That's a not to exceed amount. That's not a guaranteed spend amount. So this is a service contract where we just want to set a maximum cap to that. We don't anticipate necessarily spending $15,000. We just want to make sure that we don't exceed that cap. Um, and of course, you know, at the board's direction, we can always provide reports to you along the way of just how that's going, particularly at the end of the year. All right, any questions? Go ahead, uh, two questions. Uh, how long is it supposed to last for? December 31st or unlimited time or? Just December 31st. Just, okay. yeah, we, we put a time cap on it so that, you know, we'll look at okay. new yeah. rates and see what we can get for next year, particularly if it's a, is, is it a need going forward? You know, how much of it will we have to do? If, if we see, if we have this approved and we see like, honestly, there wasn't a huge need for it or the cost was much lower than we anticipated, we can then negotiate a new agreement for next year where we'll lower that cap amount and everything. Great. Thank you. I might add that uh, a number of these buildings are going to be in place rather than being demolished uh, for sort of an unknown period of time. I don't want to say it's a long period, mm -hmm. but as we're, as the site's getting redeveloped, mm -hmm. you know, there are various stages of um, existence, right. I guess. So uh, it's part of the timing is a little uh, cloudier because of that. Yeah, because sooner or longer, I'm going to say it's 27,000 total enough. Yeah, so this would be likely something we'll just see this we're, we're very we just took over these properties on July 1st right. so we're kind of we have a little bit of a learning curve we believe mm -hmm. that IU Health was doing probably the same thing that we were doing mm -hmm. all, all along the way but they had their internal teams usually handling this right. so we're kind of on a learning curve in these months so that's why we want to give us kind of a window mm -hmm. reevaluate and make sure we're getting both the best deal but also making sure that it well, fits the good. problem Thanks. Any other questions from commissioners? Any uh, comment from the public? Not hearing any, I'll entertain a motion on resolution 22-61. Deb Hutton, I move to approve resolution 22-61 as written. Randy Cassidy, I'll make a second. I have a first and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No one opposed. Resolution passes. Um, is there any general business discussion from the commissioners? What is the long term as we acquire these adi these additional properties and we've got them taken care of? I know the ho it, the hospital demolition is to be complete. What time is to be? By the end of next year, the main legacy hospital will be down. The, yeah, the, okay. the big building, except for the core building and the parking garage. Those are stay. Those are to stay. The additional properties that we've now acquired and such, by the time that legacy hospital is down, will we have a plan? Do we have something working towards a plan for those particular structures? So, or are we just stabilizing and holding until we make a determination. Uh, by additional structures, you mean the garage and the core building? Or the garage, the core building? building. We've already got the convalescent center mm -hmm. and those other structures are, that are already on yeah. the south side of West First Street. Sure. And the security is doing a phenomenal job, I'm sure. They really, so. you know, I, I really will say, take an opportunity if I may, because um, you all heard the funding. They really are doing a good job. And I, get, I do get reports or calls. I mean, it is everything from. <laughs> This car is strangely parked here and on city property now. What do we do? Or they'll call. I mean, it's very they're very responsive and they've done a great job with the move, all the moving parts that are happening over there, especially as it relates to Phase One East, which is the Second Street block. So, 
response to your question, um, Commissioner, it's it's happening in phases, right? So I don't want to. I could talk all night about this. So it's let me be as distinct as I can. So the, as the hospital building, the main hospital building, it looks like about half of it is down. I don't want to say by square footage half of it's down, but if you drive by, everything that was put on, you know, after 1990 or is gone. So the middle section and what's left is that big part that surrounds the core building, and so that. Um, all of this is governed by the master plan, I should say, right? So that block is sort of on hold until that's all demolished. We don't have control of that or ownership of it until until the latest at the end of next year. Demolition proceeds faster than I guess we'll talk about what that <laughs> what that means. The core building, the, the parking garage is staying uh, by all accounts indefinitely right now to serve as parking a parking structure for the larger Hopewell development. The core building has reached its first stage of preservation where um, meaning that we are keeping it to have it redeveloped. If we can get a successful project in there, we believe we have one, and get a relevant infrastructure developed around it that's required for its redevelopment, then it will also be preserved. Okay, so that's the first block. Then you move across to Rogers and you've got the phase one east portion, which is being demolished now. And that is where most of, and if you look at it as a square, the southwest square is where Centerstone is located. And that will be their building is staying and we're reconfiguring the parking a lot of it and things like that the other three quadrants are where we see a lot of housing going under the master plan and so we're in the process of looking at how to get those sort of the word out on that and the process we're going to undergo with developers and how we're going to sort of parse that out for re for redevelopment because that's where the master plan calls for the most dense housing that's the second Part. The third part is south, south of first that you're talking about. That, and that's where the structures, where the structures will remain, um, and where a lot of this activity on the security side has been focused. Um, and so the convalescent center, which is 714, 714 South Rogers, we're looking at whether that building could be reused or whether the master plan has it has it being demolished. We are looking at options for for keeping it. Um, nothing squared away yet, but it is a a pretty solid building and with already existing sort of units um, so how could it be reused we're I'm looking at that everything west of there is parceled out into three other parcels parcel 9 parcel 8 and parcel 10 is the westernmost parcel 10 is the one that is um, under the master plan uh, McDowell Gardens is just south, like the backyard of that is McDowell Gardens houses. So in the master plan that is designed for some single family type housing. We're looking at if we can move that parcel 10 piece uh, pretty quickly because that is, it's about 10 lots. You can put single family homes on. We're looking at what the options are there. What's in between there and, you know, all the rest of the way east down to the convalescent center, we're looking at, at what that's going to be. So that so, essentially will be the third leg of that. Yeah, so we I always describe this in three parts, right? There's we own two thirds of it. IE Health still owns the third third. And so we're looking at the, the two thirds that we own are being developed at different stages at different speeds because there's all kinds of moving parts to the demo, to the redevelopment of the greenway, and then we would have to under the master plan all the buildings south of first are gone. Right. And so we've got to figure out what that looks like so it's a ton of moving parts of that okay helps. makes sense there's your third, idea third part you might move the last part up a little bit earlier in order to accommodate makes if it sense. yeah the, the third IU Health that's a you know I, I'm telling everyone by the end of next year we, we that is supposed to be finished and ready for us to take ownership but Larry can chime in if there's something that's what the agreement provides yeah. so no later than December 31st of 2023 is when IU Health has to have kind of that completely demolished and ready, kind of a site ready for us, have our approval, and then turn the land over to them. So that's their hard deadline. Of course, if, if they finish with demolition early, not that we're necessarily expecting that, uh, but if they do, then um, of course we would gladly 
<laughs> and as we move forward in this process, the planning process is moving forward. So yeah. So the other thing I would notice, just just FYI, is so the next meeting, actually the next RDC meeting, we anticipate having a broader uh, presentation of what's going on at Hopewell and. and and having a few resolutions for you to look at and to consider as well, just in regard to that project, and also just giving you more of a, an update as well on the project for specific pieces. But John just described it very well. What you're going to see is movement on Phase One East. You already are seeing it through the demolition. That's where we believe construction will be happening in spring, probably of next year, just based on construction timelines and where we are in demolition. How long it'll take us to get all of our pieces lined up for that infrastructure you'll see movement there and potentially what was labeled as phase one west actually in the master plan as John alluded to is this partial 10 and so potentially some some movement there and and you know as always in terms of the disposition of real estate as well you know we have to follow that process uh, with you all and, and we'll try to get that for you so I think you'll you'll see some updates at the next meeting I, I believe is what we have scheduled so. Perfect. I have one more question and I'll be quiet for the rest of the evening I'll try <laughs> uh, your three RFPs that we found out about, or we read, we read about in the paper. Mm -hmm. So how are we moving forward on those? Yep. So that uh, good question. So there were a couple of news articles about that. So the uh, we heard back from three um, respondents on the these are the lots, the Arlington Park Drive lots that uh, the Trinitas Ventures Company is doing the uh, 300 units of rental housing and the 45 lots that are currently scheduled to be deeded over the city. So we're going through the, the uh, decision process there. So they all had great uh, responses in their own way, a lot of different um, uh, sort of attributes, different types of housing, all that kind of stuff. So, and we're also looking at a partnership with the, with the community land trust there that can help really drive affordability. So uh, the Bloomington Housing Authority's development arm, Summit Hill Community Development Corporation, has has a land trust uh, and that could be a great model for how we do that so we're looking at avenues there and that was something that was in the RF, rfi that we sent out but that could really provide a good model for permanent affordability going forward so we're looking at all the um keep you the same moving parts but just something i've come to know in this job is there are lots of moving parts and everything so there are lots of things to look through there and figure out legal stuff and pathways to how that could happen um, but our goal is to make at least half of those lots permanently affordable. And so some of the rest could be market rate, uh, depending on the model we go with. So our goal to put a punctuation on that, Randy, is that we'd like to have a, a deal in place by the end of the year. Of we can say, here's what's going to happen there, and here's who's going to be administering or developing it. So yeah. Sounds good. Thank, yeah. you. All right. Thank you. Anything else for general discussion? Commissioners. I have a question about the hospital area. Mm -hmm. Are we going to keep the fencing around there to keep the homeless from going in until something is developed? Which part? The for the phase one east where the fencing's been put up for that part, or are you talking about the main hospital site? Well, just the whole area that's being cleared has a nice fence to keep yeah. those people out. There's so many people in that area. The uh, wall work is going on and it is, it is fenced off and security goes into the fencing area. The, the main hospital block is still in by but the, but the fence will remain there and security until we're ready to... I would suspect that the fence would go away once the, the work is done. Uh, and by work being done, Larry, maybe you know the status of the fence. Right now it's up for demolition, but that's going to be the process of redevelopment is going to start taking place. So I don't know. I'd have to ask engineering about what the fence... What the yeah. life of the fence is my, uh, throughout that process. My recollection is that we requested that it stay through the infrastructure development just to keep the site secure, you know, if there's any, you know, make sure there's no dangers left or anything like that, that people may hurt themselves. But we could follow up with engineering for sure and get that solid answer. I, I don't know if that's, that's what I recall, but that could be completely mistaken. It just, it just seems unsafe for people walking along there if it's isn't protected. Yeah, we always want to keep our sites secure, mainly to protect people from themselves and, and anything that may be latent on the property so that we can also limit our own liability in that regard. That's sad. That's true. Yeah. And the fence around on the main hospital block, as long as IU Health owns it while they're demoing, that will be there, uh, I think, until that's all complete. It's, it's a nice, place. portable fence. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That does its job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And obviously security is in place there. Yeah, so. security is so. big. I also believe that one of the things just, we were also looking into potentially beautifying the fence as well. And like if we could have some 
uh, this is very early stages. You know, we have a sign ordinance within the city about what's allowed and what's not, but we've we've typically allowed some mural art to go on, and I know that there have been some discussions about whether we can put some of that along some of those fences to, to you know, just make it a little more pleasant if you're walking or driving by there. Um, just well, there are a lot of people in Prospect Hill that walk in that area, absolutely. and we mm -hmm. want them to be safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the aspect of depending on what's going on with it, individuals are coming in town they just see a demolition construction site as we see in other other communities they'll put their murals of what they're doing on those particular aspects to show the progress being made so it's a great idea on that way we've done it before i just don't know where they are in the, that conversation so that'll be i'll ask them also about that just to give you an update about what's happening all right any other general discussion from commissioners if not, I'll entertain a, a motion that we adjourn. Tim Hutton, so moved. I'm seconded. Sarah All, right. Howard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Aye. Thanks.